it's unfortunate. Okay, uh, so I was talking about growth in the dream. So uh, we can think of B as being a homotopy one type since we just used the information about homotopy one type. So we can think that B is a homotopy one type, meaning that there is no higher homotopy information. E is uh, just from the long uh, exact sequence of homotopy groups. E is then also a homotopy one type. Uh, so we get a certain covering of groupoids. Covering of groupoids is just a discrete vibration. Discrete vibration. Uh, that is uh, a functor. Um, so now I'm writing this for groupoids, uh, such that for any morphism from X to Y uh, in B, and x bar uh, in E uh, over x, there is a unique uh, lifting of a morphism F to a morphism from x bar to y bar. So now uh, we get the main principle of Galois theory formulated in the following way. Statement. discrete vibrations bijectively correspond to functors from P1 of B to sets. How do we uh, generalize it to N types, which is precisely the growth in degree to so generalize this correspondence to N types? Well, uh, I can sketch a formulation of such statement. So vibration from E to B where E and B uh, homotopy and types, uh, meaning that there are no higher homotopy groups in dimension greater than n, are classified uh, by weak functors. Weak functors meaning that functoriality is just up to equivalence, not a strict functoriality from B to N groupoids. So sets are zero groupoids. And this is an extension of uh, what we were trying to do for covering spaces. Well, uh, so Grothendieck showed this Show this for n equal one. Uh, Ermida for n equal two. Uh, and the general case is still open. Uh, so we consider um, the case n equals one. Uh, let uh, E and B be just groups. And let us fix a fiber. A fiber F 
uh, also a group. And then uh, we get a functor uh, which has its image in the following two group. So uh, we get functors which classify extensions and those functors are functors from B to this uh, capital out of F. And this is a two group of automorphisms of F. What a two group is, well, it's just a, a two group void with one object. So, So we have just one object, uh, morphisms, which all are invertible and morphisms between morphisms, which are also all invertible. So uh, algebraically, we're saying that all extensions on the following form are classified by functors from B to Automorphisms of F. Classify. They classify these extensions. Uh, so let us describe this uh, category uh, out of F more explicitly. First, F is a unique object this is quite unsurprising since this out of f is supposed to act on this uh, on f and f is precisely uh, the thing that this whole category acts on so an automorphism of f is a narrow from F to F. And what are two morphisms? So we have an elements of, uh, we have elements of uh, the fiber F uh, such that, um, so let alpha and beta be uh, automorphisms of F. I write it for just the ordinary group of automorphisms. And we describe uh, two morphisms. So a morphism between morphisms uh, is precisely uh, such uh, Gs which uh, conjugate one, uh, automorphism into another one. So we get two regular automorphisms from, well, maps from F to F. And then between them, we get a two morphism G, which conjugates one uh, automorphism into another one. So uh, out of F, uh, is a subcategory in group points uh, with unique object F. So now uh, we want to say a bit more about classifying short exact sequences of groups. So once again, consider a short exact sequence. Classifying short exact sequences of groups via set theoretic sections.
yeah. So uh, consider a section here. Uh, let me denote it some some way. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for any b in b capital, we have uh, an automorphism. Uh, there is an automorphism of F given by alpha of B acting on F is equal to S of B acting on F S of B, uh, to the power minus one. So uh, obviously S is not a homomorphism of groups unless an abstention is split. Uh, so we don't in general have, uh, well, basically the construction I'm describing now will be very similar to the gluing uh, co-cycle in uh, fiber bundles, if uh, someone is familiar with this construction. So we have a failure of uh, associativity here uh, sorry, uh, of uh, uh, of S being a homomorphism. So uh, we we don't have this uh, equality. However, we have an equivalence. Uh, this equivalence is uh, given by the following. So the product of alpha B alpha B prime. Uh, conjugated by certain element uh, of F uh, is equal to this product. So uh, G can be expressed like this. It's the product of this form. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, to the power minus one. So we get a weak two functor. So here we already see that the functor should be weak because we don't have uh, functoriality, but we have a weak factor. Functoriality, that means that we have functoriality up to equivalence. So we get a weak functor, B alpha from B to this uh, category out capital of F. So um, if we want two functors uh, give equivalent extensions. And uh, this set of uh, maps from B to out of F uh, is called non abelian uh, cohomology of B with coefficients. So uh, this is very similar to all this uh, Czech business when we uh, create uh, this glue and cosine. Okay, so what we established here is that extensions uh, between F and B are classified uh, up to two categorical equivalents uh, by weak functors mm. between B and out of. So this is a two category. This is also a two category. And those two categories are equivalent. So this was a snapshot of growth and dream. 
uh, but we will meet it later when we will talk about uh, relationship between categorical decomposition of morphisms and Posnikov towers. So basically, Grothendieck dream is a way of going between category theory and topology, uh, but more on that later. So now uh, we will just say something about uh, n categories in general. Um, so uh, Bayes calls it the power negative thinking. Uh, the reason is that we will not only see what n categories is for non-negative ends, but what also what uh, n categories are for negative ends. Okay, so uh, first of all, we can uh, try to understand um, what are um, N plus K categories. Uh, okay, uh, so for uh, sorry, N K categories. So for uh, zero and zero. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, what do I mean by, uh, well, that's not, okay, I will denote it like this, but I'll explain what I mean. So uh, if uh, J is lower than K, uh, then, so uh, N, N is the usual N in N categories, meaning that we have morphisms uh, from one to N, from zero to N, if we count objects as morphisms, and K means that uh, we don't have any morphisms uh, in dimension lower than K, except for identical ones. No non-trivial morphisms. So the good topological way to think about what is happening is that uh, N and K give us certain range where we can have homotopy groups and we don't have homotopy groups uh, below K and above N. So that's the basic idea. Uh, okay. So uh, for zero and zero, we have sets, just discrete, discrete uh, objects. For one, we have uh, categories. Mm, for two, we have two categories and so on. Here we have uh, commutative monoids. Uh, here we have something called braided monoidal categories. Uh, here we have monoidal two categories and so on. So uh, yeah, here uh, we have uh, everything below here is the same as this guy here. So here we have uh, symmetric monoidal categories. Um, so here we have braided monoidal two categories. I mean, uh, for now, those are just empty words, and I think they will remain empty. I'm just, I'm just showing some kind of a table. The main idea here is that uh, after some iterations, the table should stabilize. And uh, the curious thing here is that we actually don't go all the way up here. So uh, here it stabilizes here and so on. And so we have a diagonal that should end somewhere here, somewhere here, maybe, yes. Uh, 
And so uh, this is uh, the reason that suggests that should, we should also have minus one categories and minus two categories. So uh, in order to understand uh, what these are, uh, we will have to, first of all, I can give an answer already. Right? So minus one categories consists just of two objects, true and false, no morphisms. Uh, and minus two categories, uh, it's just, there is just one minus two category, which consists of uh, only one object necessarily true. So how we will uh, understand this? Well, uh, we need to understand, first we need to understand something about general and categories. Uh, so, Something about general categories. So first of all, uh, any n category is in fact uh, n plus uh, well, n plus one category and so on. Uh, we just don't have any higher morphisms. Uh, so for n morphisms, we have no equivalences. just identities. So uh, that's the basic idea behind uh, all these higher categories. Um, we should keep track of equalities. Uh, so we replace uh, equalities with equivalences and we keep track of the morphisms which realize this equivalent, these equivalences. And that's uh, the basic idea. And if we don't have any higher morphisms, then we don't have equivalences. We have just strict, uh, well, we have equivalences up to identical morphism, which just means strict equality. Okay. So, uh, in the same way, uh, any uh, n category is an infinity category. So infinity category is just like a direct limit of n categories, which just have uh, uh, morphisms for arbitrary large n. And so uh, the set of, uh, so all morphisms in uh, dimension higher than n, for an N category are just identities. Okay. Uh, and also uh, inside, uh, so that was the first, the first point about N categories is that uh, in dimension N, we don't have uh, equivalences, we just have, uh, we don't have equivalences, we just have equivalences. Uh, the second point is that uh, we actually uh, can find a small, a small in the very uh, mundane uh, sense of the word, small uh, and subcategories uh, in the following way. So uh, inside any and category, there are small and subcategories. Um, 
for example, let C be a three category. And then, uh, well, uh, we have two objects, two morphisms between them, two, two morphisms between those one morphisms, and one morphism between those two morphisms. So this is a, a very a little and uh, three category in this case, uh, which can be denoted by uh, home home category between two objects. So uh, this is uh, since we consider these now as objects. Uh, this is now uh, three minus one, aka two category. So we have uh, one morphisms being two morphisms and two morphism being a three morphism between two morphisms. So in general, yeah, so here I should write N minus one. In general, CXY is N minus one category. for n category c. We can uh, con uh, continue this uh, construction and uh, if we have two parallel uh, J morphisms, J morphisms, for example, those can be parallel two morphisms. Then, uh, home between them is n minus j minus one category. So uh, we can use this uh, equation to obtain minus one and minus two categories. How we're going to do that? So a trick. Consider home category between two objects where X and Y are uh, two and morphisms. Um, then what we get here? Well, we get N minus N minus one, okay, minus one category. So uh, as we uh, re can recall earlier, I said that uh, N morphisms don't have equivalences, they just have uh, equalities. So uh, that implies that if we have two morphisms, which are uh, in two N morphisms, then uh, home between them, consists just of two points. So true and false. Why can we call them true and false? Well, obviously because uh, one of them uh, means that those two morphisms in fact coincide and the other means that there are no morphisms between them. And that means that they're different because once again, we don't have equivalences, we don't have equivalent uh, morphisms of top degree, we just have equal morphisms of top degree. So actually we have uh, established that minus one category consists just of two points. Uh, and we can actually prove that uh, there are no uh, other minus one categories, uh, but I will not do this. Right now, uh, well, it, it's just a simple exercise, so maybe I can leave it. For... Size. Proof. Yeah, no. 
other minus one categories. So uh, similarly, uh, if we have uh, j equal n plus one, that is we have two parallel n plus one morphisms, And we remember that there are no uh, n plus one morphisms except uh, identities. So parallel n plus one morphisms means that uh, it is an identity on the same object. Thus, uh, they are equal. And we have the own the object equal to necessary true because we don't uh, because all parallel uh, n plus one morphisms coincide. So we have a unique two categories. Okay, so actually the idea of proof that there are no uh, there are no more minus one categories is that uh, one may try to uh, embed this category into uh, an arbitrary n category and see that um, the only possible way uh, for it to exist is uh, when it has only two objects and no more physics. Okay. So now uh, we're ready to talk about homotopy and types. Uh, and I will formulate precisely now what is a growth in degree. A growth in degree. So homotopy and types. Okay. Um, Structure of the hypothesis uh, degree is the following that uh, and group words is equal to n homotopy types. So um, like we've seen before, mm, it is natural to expect that we can classify um, all uh, n homotopy types by considering weak functors, well, all uh, covers of uh, all, all vibrations with uh, n homotopy types as weak functors to n plus one group words. And so a similar statement here is that actually n groupoids and n homotopy types are the same thing. So uh, if we think of it, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I think that, well, uh, basically another way to say it is that uh, we can build uh, a topological space or a simplicial set from uh, stages of groupoids and if this if we end at the stage number n then homotopy groups should also end at the stage number n uh, this is in contrast with uh, the usual uh, for example construction of cellular subdivision where we obviously don't uh, where we obviously can have higher homotopy groups but here since we construct everything from groupoids we don't have such problem and uh, that's the basic idea behind growth in degree. But now I will uh, clarify a bit uh, what does it mean, uh, what, what the statement means. So I said some intuitive words, but now I will uh, formulate it more clearly. So, uh, and groupoids, uh, uh, 
uh, those are just uh, objects where uh, those are just categories where everything, meaning every morphism, everything is invertible up to high equivalence, uh, up to higher morphisms. So obviously it's uh, an end category. And so in particular, uh, end morphisms are just strictly invertible. So this thing here is should be properly called weak and group words. The word weak means that up to equivalence. We consider everything up to equivalence, weak and group words. And they should be uh, equivalent, uh, quillen uh, equivalent uh, to spaces such that in J for J greater than N should be equal to, equal to zero. Um, okay. So that's the basic idea behind growth in the dream. Uh, one can see that uh, on one side we have something categorical and group points and on the other side we have uh, N homotopy types. And so, uh, if we uh, believe in this uh, hypothesis, uh, then a certain statement about category theory can be formulated uh, purely topologically and vice versa. So from a purely categorical statement, we can get a homotopical one. For example, uh, later, as I already told, we will derive the fact that each space has a Posnikov tower using uh, this hypothesis from the fact that each functor has a factorization as a certain sequence of uh, functors between, uh, well, a certain sequence of functors with certain properties. So uh, they are, should be subjective on certain classes of morphisms. Each functor decomposes in this way, and this will later yield the Postnikov tower. So uh, I'm just explaining how growth in the dream relates topology and category theory here. Okay, so uh, since we introduced uh, negative and categories, I can also introduce negative homotopy groups. Um, so definition. Negatively graded homotopy groups. So uh, PJ is equal to X, uh, PJ of X is equal to zero if uh, for any spheroid. We have, uh, sorry, J. There is a disk of dimension J plus one, which, uh, when restricted to the boundary of the disk, uh, equals F. Uh, so uh, X is a zero homotopy type. If all higher uh, spheres are contractible. What does it mean in practice? Well, in practice, it means that X is a union of um, connected components, each of which is equivalent to a point. Uh, a disclaimer, I will only consider compactly generated Hausdorff spaces for which uh, there are no, uh, well, I'm not sure that 
this is enough. Okay, I will consider space is not nice enough that I don't have to care uh, to care about the fact that it is weakly equivalent to a point. It's just equivalent to a point. Okay, so uh, in a similar way, we can uh, describe a homo homotopy minus one type. So uh, this is the homotopy zero type, such that for any S zero um, to X, there is D one to X, such that. They coincide. So now it just means that X should be uh, at least up to homotopy, uh, either empty or a one point set. Now, uh, what is the minus one sphere? Well, a minus one sphere is just a sphere inside the space R zero, which is empty and uh, D minus one is a disk inside of the space R zero. Well, uh, th this is just uh, standard. We standardly define a sphere as set of points, as a set of unit uh, of vectors of length one inside of a space Rn plus one. So here I just wrote it for R zero. So uh, D minus one uh, is just this. And so uh, minus two type is uh, precisely is, is always uh, one point set. Up to uh, obviously up to homotopy. Okay. Uh, now, since I already described what is a homotopy minus one type and homotopy minus two type, uh, I can now talk about this category of part of the story, which I promised. So uh, this section is called stuff uh, structure and properties. And uh, I will tell something about forgetful functions. But what is a forgetful function? Okay, uh, so first of all, in order to uh, explain what I mean by stuff, structure and properties, I will consider a concrete example. is a set, which is some kind of stuff, plus structure, multiplication. Multiplication gives us structure. Plus properties. Uh, which are just group equations. So we know that the operation should be associative, uh, have left and right units, which coincide. Each element should have an inverse and so on. And now we can consider an example, uh, several examples in fact of forgetful factors. Okay, so P is a functor and P forgets nothing. 
That's just an identity functor from a billion groups to a billion groups. Second, uh, he forgets properties. We can forget the fact that an abelian group is abelian and just consider it as an arbitrary group. We forgot property, uh, which is just an equation, AB is equal to BA. So we forgot properties. That is another kind of forgetful functor. Uh, he forgets. Uh, at most structure. So that's a function from a billion groups to sets. Uh, yes, which is just forgets the structure of a group on a set. And finally, uh, he forgets stuff. is when uh, P is in fact an arbitrary uh, functor. So uh, in the notes, we have the following example. It's a functor from pairs of sets, which just forgets the second coordinate. Okay, so actually, as we will see uh, in just a few moments, uh, this uh, condition that functor forgets something uh, is in fact uh, homotopical. So uh, the more the functor forgets, the richer the fiber is in the sense of homotopy theory. So each functor obviously has a fiber. Uh, and if it, for, for example, forgets nothing, then the fiber over uh, the point is just uh, a fiber over an object, it's just an object. Uh, so it's homotopically trivial. If it forgets uh, some properties, then the fiber can be richer. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, uh, the fiber can be richer. Uh, I will explain it uh, in more detail in a few moments. So. Uh, I will uh, now say something about homotopical pre-image. So uh, I should specify that uh, the word forgetful functor here is uh, purely decorative because uh, actually any functor is forgetful in some sense. So as I said, the uh, functor that forgets stuff is an arbitrary functor. So you can't really pin down what a forgetful functor is. Uh, and that's basically, I think, uh, uh, well, I think it should be, uh, well known since uh, it is really hard to find the definition of forgetful functor. So sometimes the uh, functor to sets is called forgetful, but this is somewhat arbitrary. Okay. So we have uh, a forgetful functor. Consider an object X and D. We can consider its pre image. Uh, or rather an essential pre-image. Which means that um, we close uh, this pre-image under all equivalences. Uh, so it consists of objects um, E and in E capital such that projection is equivalent to X. 
uh, and morphisms there are just uh, morphisms, morphisms which are preserved by projection. So those are um, morphisms in uh, E, uh, such that uh, they are mapped. Morphisms in B and the following diagram computes. Okay. So let's consider an example. If E and B are group points, then uh, P gets structure if uh, the fiber is one group word. For example, uh, we can consider forgetful functor. Uh, which was described above. So we just map it like this. And so we have a whole group where it, uh, of possible, uh, yeah, it, it, it has a full group where it of possible uh, Ys here, which are in the fiber over X. So that's an example. So obviously, obviously, um, those suggest zero group. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm sorry, I just uh, was a clearly a mistake. So it forgets stuff because uh, I, I was wondering why didn't add up. So for that stuff, if the fiber is one group. Right? So, uh, and this was an example when we forget stuff. So that's precisely how it's supposed to work. So F uh, for that structure now, the fiber is zero group point. Just a set. So uh, we had a functor from a billion groups to sets, and we had uh, we have a set of ways to endow a set with the structure of an abelian group. Finally, mm, P when gets properties, if uh, the fiber is minus one group point. This corresponds precisely, so one or zero. So this uh, corresponds precisely to the situation where we projected from 
abelian groups to just arbitrary groups. And so uh, if you have a group, you have like two possible answers. Either it is abelian or it is not abelian. So this precisely corresponds to those two values. Okay. And if uh, he forgets nothing, then uh, the fiber is just minus two groupoid, which is just a point. Because, uh, well, uh, you basically don't have uh, any information lost if um, you have a functor that forgets nothing. So yeah, this is pretty natural. Okay, uh, so now I think uh, I can start uh, explaining the relationship with topology. Uh, I don't know. Are there any questions so far? If not, then I will just uh, continue. So uh, first thing I want to talk about are factorizations. And those are precisely those Poisnikov towers in category theory that I was talking about. So consider an infinity functor, meaning that it just preserves up to equivalence composition of uh, and morphisms for arbitrary large n, infinity functor. It is called n subjective. Uh, if we're given for well. And minus one morphisms. E and E prime. Mm -hmm. And uh, for any and morphism. F. And times two uh, e, e prime. There is so this is happening in B. There is uh, F tilde which covers it. So the definition is uh, pretty natural, which just require uh, that. Uh, on anamorphisms, uh, the functor is subjective. Essentially subjective. So we consider everything up to equivalence. Uh, consider an example. Uh, consider a vibration of sets. Uh, so P is zero subjective. Uh, so uh, is zero subjective if is subjective. Mm. Since uh, all zero morphisms are just identities. So it should be subjective on identities, meaning it is subjective. Or better to, better to say essentially subjective because uh, we have everything up to 
equivalence. Uh, and a surprising thing is that P is one subjective. when it is injective. So why is that? Well, if we have uh, a morphism in sets, meaning that we just have uh, an equality here, since those are just discrete, discrete sets. Uh, meaning that by by our assumption, uh, there exists an equality between pre-images. So if we leave the one morphism, which is just identity, we should get another one morphism in sets, which is also just identity. So uh, that means injectivity, precisely injectivity. And now note the following. So uh, subjective, and injective maps form factorization, form a factorization system on sets. So each morphism can be uniquely decomposed into the composition of zero subjective, meaning just subjective morphism to E prime and uh, an injective or one subjective morphism from E prime to B. This is quite clear. E prime is just an image. So if this is P, this is just an image of P and this is an inclusion of this image into Now we can uh, make a step up and consider a factor between categories. So here, zero subjectivity once again corresponds to essential subjectivity essential subjectivity. One subjectivity uh, corresponds to the fact that the factor is full, uh, meaning that uh, it is subject upon a set of morphisms in the image. It is too subjective if it is uh, Fully faithful. And it is three subjective. He is arbitrary. So three subjectivity condition does not yield anything new and so the first assertion is pretty obvious. We just seen it for sets. Um, Now about one subjectivity. Mm. As I already said, uh, this one falls from the fact that it should be subjective on arrows, meaning that it's just subjective on precisely those arrows which are in the image of the function restricted to objects. And now uh, the most interesting part is about uh, two subjectivity. The subjective uh, is the same as subjective on equalities um, between morphisms. Uh, this is precisely a condition of the function being fully faithful. So note that if we add up conditions zero, 
one and two, P is an equivalence because it's subjective on objects and fully faithful. Uh, yeah, I don't think that it's just faithful here because uh, we don't know uh, anything about subjectivity. Yeah, we don't know anything about subjectivity on one morphisms. No, wait a second, that can be right. No, it, it, everything was okay. So it's fully faithful because uh, any one morphism can be represented as uh, a trivial. No, 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 no. So, okay, uh, so it's just faithful because, uh, well, uh, the argument is similar to showing that one subjective uh, functor between sets is in fact injective. And here we have the same thing, but uh, for categories. So it all relies on this philosophy that in the top degree, uh, we don't have uh, equalities, uh, equivalences between morphisms, we just have equality. So here uh, it is very similar. The function is faithful because uh, if we have uh, subjectivity on uh, equivalences, that means that uh, any two morphisms which coincide in the image should coincide in the pre-image. Okay, so now we can formulate these uh, four conditions which said something about forgetting structure or stuff. Okay, so first, uh, forget uh, forget nothing. It's just zero plus one plus two. Uh, forgetting uh, most properties is just one plus two. Getting at most structure is just two. Uh, and so uh, finally, for getting stuff is just three because for getting stuff is an arbitrary function. And now we also have a factorization. So uh, we can turn any category along the functor P uh, into its image category using the following procedure. So here we first of all have zero plus one, meaning that it is uh, subjective on object and it is full. Here we have zero plus two also subjective on objects and faithful. Finally, here we have one plus two, meaning that it is not necessarily subjective on objects, but uh, on this part of the, image, of the image on which it is subjective, it is uh, fully faithful. So the procedure is uh, uh, very similar to that in sets. So how do we construct such factorization? We start from E. Uh, so procedure to construct such factorization. From E, then we add uh, two morphisms. Equalities between one morphisms and B. So we map some morphisms, they become equal in the image. Uh, we add those two morphisms into category E. And we get a category E prime. It is evident from the definition that 
uh, the function is indeed uh, zero and one surjective. Then to get uh, E two primes, uh, we just uh, add one morphism. So here the functor is also subjective on objects because we don't didn't change uh, the class of object, but uh, it may be not subjective on morphisms. However, if we had two equal morphisms, uh, then their preimages are also equal. That's condition number two. Uh, and finally, to get uh, B, we add missing objects and arrows not okay so we now have uh, this kind of authorization and we can write the whole The following. to forget uh, just stuff. This zero uh, plus one. Functor forgets. Just structure if it is zero plus two. Finally, functor forgets just properties. If it is one plus two. Okay, so I think I will just consider an example and we will finish here. Uh, so an example of such factorization is the following. So we can take category of pairs of vector spaces, which is mapped to just the forgetful function to sets from the first one. Then we have a factorization like this. So objects of E prime are just pairs VW such that VW are vector spaces and uh, morphisms in E prime between such pairs are just linear morphisms between the first components. Now, uh, so that was E prime, E two primes is the following thing. So objects E two prime are forgetful functors V such that Yeah, so we just uh, consider it a functor which is suggestive for objects, but we remove uh, the second coordinate. And uh, morphisms uh, in E2 primes between uh, two such objects. I just all set theoretic maps between them. So this is a gradual transformation from category of pairs of vector spaces into a category of sets. Okay. Uh, 
I think that we're pretty close to Plesnikov Towers. However, I did not manage to reach them today, but hopefully I will be able to do it next time. So I think I should stop here.